So I'm just gonna attach those now. Now he's using treated pine. Maybe cedar would be a better choice, albeit more expensive, so. Inch and a half black roofing screws. One inch screws might be a better choice there. Oh, you saw some reaction videos we've done in the past, if you follow the channel, where nail heads can stick through the two fours on the inside and become a, a pretty decent hazard. Uh, I just like chopped it right on. A anytime you're working with thin metal, you gotta wear gloves. Today's video is brought to you by Nationwide Industries, the Fence Pro's number one choice. And they're this Fence Pro's choice for a couple reasons. The most recent reason? Gate kits. They've paired their most popular hinges with their most popular latches in the most common post sizes to make it easier to grab and go. Also, as a consumer, it makes sure you know you've got the right hinge for the right latch. For example, if you've got a pull gate, they've got a pull gate kit just for you. It's got the cornerstone hinge in it, it's got the Trident 20 inch, both some of our most popular gate hinge hardwares. You've got a vinyl fence with five inch posts, they got you covered. They've got their cornerstone two hinge, they've got the keystone traverse latch, which I love a lot. They've also got a handle in there. But if you have a vinyl fence with say, a four inch post, they've got that too. All at Nationwide Industries, Check them out in the link below. All right guys, today's video is titled, Fence Contractors Hate Me For Showing You This. I can't wait to dive into it. Now we're only gonna review a segment. This is a 24 minute video. So we're gonna we're going to react to a shorter segment of it. If you'd like to watch the entire video without my commentary, we'll link that in the description below. Hacksman's generally got good content. So I, I've got a hard time believing I'm gonna hate him for showing, it, for showing us this, but let's dive into it. So starting off with, we've got Postmaster Post. Looks like Postmaster like Plus with the additional holes. To go on this end, because I want to be able to cap this off to dress it up at the end. So I'm just going to attach those now. Yeah, so you can rip a two by four and a half is pretty typical. Now he's using treated pine. Maybe cedar would be a better choice, albeit more expensive. So probably depends. But if we're already investing in steel post, maybe cedar rails. That being said, I can't think of too many fences where the rails have failed first. Uh, typically, rails are, they're going to be there, but where you'd see cedar have the advantage is going to be less warping and twisting. So as you look down the top of this fence, less of kind of a snake motion, but teach their own. So we're going to be using 26 gauge corrugated metal roofing. Now, Okay. You can get 29 gauge, it's a little bit cheaper. Generally, that's what you're gonna find like in your hardware stores is 29 gauge, and that's gonna be the standard corrugated, you know, swirly roofing. This I got from um, a custom roof supplier. Thank you, I was like manufacturer or whatever. And so this is the heavier duty. This is more like the commercial grade. So it also has uh, deeper ridges. These ridges are an inch and a quarter. And this is black. Now there is one downside to this. And that's the back side is white. Makes sense, it's for roofing. We've actually installed fence similar to this around, um, I think, automotive recycling yards, national chain kind of thing. They typically like to have these around their yards. Fairly inexpensive, fairly secure. I have time to do that, so my sister's just gonna go back once, it's, once everything's up and paint this from the back. Which that makes sense also, because then you can also paint the rails. The downside to this is going to be, uh, I'm guessing this is sister's house. Uh, she's gonna see those steel posts couple options. If we're already doing treated pine uh, rails, you could do a treated pine picket. Actually, these are, so the fins are gonna be a little bit too wide. Typically, the post would be on the other, the other orientation. So your skinny side of the post would be covered with a picket. That way you could use just a standard five and a half, or we'll use a seven and a half inch wide picket. Cover that pretty easily, center it on there. She'll have a tougher time just because she's got the wide part on her end. It could go either way. Um, but she can paint that black at the same time that she's painting the back side of this roofing. Inch and a half black roofing screws. So a uh, two by four is typically inch and a half ish nominal wide. It's never two inch wide. Not never. Uh, if you can buy dimensional lumber, but these tree pine two by fours are never two inches. Inch and a half typically. So one inch screws might be a better choice there. Oh, you saw some reaction videos we've done in the past. If you follow the channel, where nail heads can stick through the two by fours on the inside and become a a pretty decent hazard. You could do yourself a favor 
inch, inch and a quarter. Arguably on this fence, I don't know that you would have a measurable difference in terms of strength between inch and inch and a quarter, but he's got a washer, so he's probably safe, but margin of error here. Yeah, you don't want to over tighten or you'll have leaks. I think I'm going to have to make a template so that I know exactly where to put every screw. So I'm going to do that now. Exactly right. And you can tell Hexman is more of a professional than a standard DIY type channel. Uh, we talk about this a lot in that if you're doing a repetitive task more than a couple times, it's faster, more efficient, typically better results if you make a template or a jig, depending on what you decide to call it. Likely just hang it on top of the panel. It'll lay out exactly right, show you exactly where to shoot those screws. So, oh, we're going to put one right there. Put that one there. And we put that one right there. You can't just eyeball this. You certainly could, Kimberly, if you didn't care how it looked. Now, one thing I might do, just improvement on this jig, if you want to call it that, you could run a screw in the top of that to where it holds itself. That way it's repeatable. If you're holding it, and you're running the screw in based on the marks, there's a chance those marks get off. If you hang it, that will always be in the same place, as long as the top of your tin or your roofing material is at the top of the two by four. All right, we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. So uh, Hacksman is gonna continue this process. Uh, the topping of it, I think, was a bit, uh, a bit interesting. If you look at the top of this fence here, it's like, what in the world is going on? I'm like below the top. And then we come over here and, oh yeah, like right there. Oh, steps down, what's going on? Oh, look how low, look how low I am right there. Sheesh. Oh man, what is wrong? Haxman sucks. What is going on? Look at that, look at that. Well, the reason it's like that is because I didn't do this level across. I did it where it sweeps. Woo, there's a hill in the yard right there. And so this comes, whoop. It might be hard to see it, but it does a little bit. So he followed terrain. Obviously they didn't want the entire fence being three, four, five inches off. It went over the rise or the hump or whatever. Pretty typical, so this is stair-stepping. Now the way he caps it is, I think it makes it look really nice. Let me see. I don't know. I just like chopped it right on. Anytime you're working with thin metal, you gotta wear gloves. You should be wearing gloves. I know. Red? Top of that. Oh. All right, let me put my gloves on like an idiot. I'm gonna take this one by. Now see, if I were doing this, and you know, if we we're offering this to customers just in, a, in an effort to make it efficient. So knowing that the top cap is going on anyway, it's gonna ride on that top two before. I probably would have gone ahead and had the guys run the top two before when they ran that top rail or that cap two before, two by six in this case, when they ran that top two before. That way when they're running the sheet metal or the roofing, they can run it up to that cap every time. A uh, little more consistent results, even as it goes up over that grade, they can follow that pretty easily, knowing that the cap's going on. Hacksman's getting ready to add the trim to it. That way you don't see any of that deviation anyway. So if you're a quarter inch off, if you're half inch off, it's gonna cover that very nicely. Top cap probably could have gone on first though. And that's gonna be oh, how I determine. I'm just gonna do a very small lip. like that he's using coated deck screws. All right, I cut that at a 45 there. So hopefully that'll make for a cleaner, better joint. 
Guys, this is a tip no matter whether you're doing this or any type of cap and trim. Always run those tops at 45 and have them sit on top of each other. I can't tell you, there's a few companies in town that'll do cap and trim, but with just two 90 degree corners butted up with each other, never ends up looking great uh, over time. This is a much more finished look. I needed probably another hour to finish everything on the fence how I wanted, but that would mean driving all the way over there and that means a whole nother day to finish the fence. Technically, the fence is finished just how it is, and I'm happy the way it came out. My original plan was to run a 1x4 along the bottom edge of the fence as well and run some vertical 1x4s. I wanted to frame it out in 8 foot sections. I couldn't get that done, but it still looks good and she's happy with it and they can finish it later. I think this looks fine as is. There's a point where you can do too much. I think the bottom rail and especially splitting it up every eight feet, I think that could look a bit much. I think it looks great. So you talked about sister coming back and painting it. Obviously, she's probably going to paint that top cap and trim black as well. Um, I think it might be a nice touch maybe to um, run an accent color maybe would uh, pop pretty nicely on this. Overall, Postmaster, well, steel posts in general, in this case, Postmaster galvanized post with this roofing material that's made to last. This is a fence. I mean, the top, the cap and trim, Maybe it needs replaced after 15, 20 years just from warping, twisting. The top cap, you you would expect to see a little bit of rotting unless you unless you sealed it. I'm a little bit of rotting there just with standing water. But overall, a great fence. Uh, you know, we might offer it here. We might put it out in the display yard to see if it catches anybody's attention. I think it could be a good look. I really do. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Haxman, I don't hate you for showing anybody this, I think, uh, but sometimes titles can be made to uh, entice people to view possibly, but uh, I think this was a well done video, well done fence. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As always, Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors, and I'll see you next time.